You know, when I get to talking like I did last night, I could, I, I lose track of time. I think I could talk for a week. I don't know. Um, fortunately, nobody's had to endure that much, but um, what we're really interested in is, you know, uh, we evolve as spiritual students. We evolve. There are instantaneous awakenings. Uh, I have read of a number of instantaneous awakenings. Um, and I don't have a comfortable word for awakening or enlightenment or whatever. Um, I think it's a different experience for everybody, so I don't think there's a target we shoot for. It's our path, and our path is unique, and we, we want to honor that uniqueness and not try to follow anybody else's path. Um, we can't, you know, when we get off on somebody else's path, things start to go wrong because our path is unique. So we need to be very aware of internal guidance. And many places that I speak, people are not too familiar with their internal guidance. But the advantage of dowsers is you've been using it for 30 years or whatever. It, it is what moves your pendulum or your dowsing rods or whatever. You have already learned you can ask any question about anything and there will be an answer available. So we have many forms of internal guidance. Sometimes it's just intuition. It's not dowsing, but dowsing is always there. So on our path, what, what we're gathered together, our path is unique. Our path is perfect for us. It's based on our personal history. It's what we need, what we are learning, what we are grasping, or anybody ever read that book about grokking? We, we're grokking the answer, um, looking for insight. So it is going to be different than everybody else. And that's hard for humans because you go uh, hear some guru or teacher or somebody who's an authority figure and they say, do it this way. And you just have to discount that. You just have to say, well, maybe I'm supposed to take two steps on that path, but then I'm back on my own path, right? But one thing seems to be pretty common, uh, so far as I can tell, in this uh, journey that we're on, <clears throat> is um, we occasionally, it's our unique path, we, we go inside, we find it, we follow it, it does not involve anybody else, but we can't do it alone. So that's kind of a paradox. We have to have our support group. We have to have somebody that we can call and say, I'm lost today. And uh, I, I get amazed at my wife, Anne. She has a support group that is pretty unbelievable. Um, where whichever one of them, and they don't live anywhere near each other, they're around the world, but one of them gets lost, they call the other one and they hear exactly what they need to hear. They're so intuitive. They just know what you need to hear, okay? So we want to uh, use a, a group like this to assist each other to help each other. Now, that means that we distinguish between our ego minds and our intuitive spirit minds. Now, as I mentioned last night, ego is not bad. Uh, you don't want to get rid of ego because ego is the practical side. Ego is what uh, gets you across the street in traffic, right? That's really nice to have but you don't want to let it rule your life. You don't want to let it make decisions. Uh, just talking with somebody back there about uh, their path, and it was uh, the subject uh, moved over to complexity. One way we know that we have slipped into ego, ego is the part of us that thinks it has answers. Ego is the part of us that thinks it knows something. Ego is the part of us that believes it is separate from everyone else. And we don't stay there a lot. You're familiar with that. <laughs> Something comes up in your face and we drop right back into reactive living. Got to do something. 
Got to fix that. Got to change that. You know, and there are no answers in reactive living. There are answers in inner peace, inner guidance, and that sort of thing. So our job with each other is to bring each other back to center, help each other come back to center. Now, uh, tomorrow in the all-day workshop um, will be very, very interactive. <clears throat> we will... Um, it, it, it's, it always kind of blows my mind when we have a whole day to work on something, uh, how many answers we can come up with for each other. And we want to come up with answers for each other as opposed to trying to figure out our own answers. When we start trying to figure out our own answers, ego jumps right in there. It says, I know about that. I read a book. Now, let me tell you, page 59 says, <clears throat> So when we, when we work with each other, we'll do it a little bit today, we'll do it a whole lot tomorrow. <clears throat> when we work with each other, we start with a deep breath. I'm going to say something to you, and I have no idea what it is. It's not something I have thought out or is logical. It's something that comes directly from my guidance offered to you as a gift. Now, I've had this happen so many times in my life, hundreds, thousands of times. I was driving down the Pennsylvania Turnpike one time, and I stopped at a toll booth. And as I handed the toll booth attendant some money, I looked at him, and he was deeply depressed. And what came out of my mouth was nothing logical, nothing I'd ever thought about. I simply just instantly said, don't worry, your wife is going to be okay. Toll booth attendant, handing him the money. You know, if I'd thought about that, I'd have never said that, of course. You just say what comes to mind. <clears throat> now, if you were the toll booth attendant, how would you react? Would you say, huh? What are you talking about? Who are you? What do you know? No, no. His face lit up. And he said, thank you, thank you. It was just one of those amazing moments. Leaving a meeting similar to this one time, and a woman walking out, I'd, been, I'd noticed her during the whole evening, and she hadn't smiled once. And I just opened my mouth. And I said, don't worry. Being... Uh, I don't remember the exact words I said. Don't worry, being depressed happens to everyone just before the sunrise. I got the biggest hug I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much that if you let your intuition guide your words, we doubt, you know, oh, I can't say that. We doubt this and that and the other. But if you let your intuition guide your words, you will have the right thing to say to the right person at the right time. It may be a stranger in the grocery store. You have no idea. But people need that little kickstart to get back on their spiritual path. Okay. I remember someone who did that for me once, and it was in a grocery store. And I was just feeling like, oppression or something. And this woman, she was a clerk. She worked in this grocery store. And she just came up and gave me the biggest smile. No, no word, no nothing. That smile turned my day around just like that. So it's amazing what we can do for each other. Now, <clears throat> I thought today we would do some questions and answers. You know, I can talk a long time, but that doesn't mean I'm going to pinpoint what you're working on. <clears throat> Thought we might do some questions and answers and see if we can come up with the spiritual answer for each other. Now, the ego will jump in and say, you need to do this, you need to do that. That's always wrong. It's not wrong. It's just a waste of time. It's always a waste of time. Ego always has an agenda. If your answer 
has an agenda, back out of it for a minute. Get your dowsing rod out, get your pendulum out, and say, is there a better answer? Could I rephrase this, right? Always double check your answer. Am I coming from ego? Am I coming from spirit, right? Spirit's gonna put words in your head that you weren't thinking, right? I mean, if you knew everything spirit knew already, you wouldn't be here, right? You're here because you're on a path. You need the next step. We all need the next step. Okay. Now, there's other subjects I did not touch upon last night. And tomorrow, again, we'll have more time to touch upon everything. But let me just ask you, how many people here, if you want to reveal this, you don't have to reveal this, but how many people here have had a near-death experience? Oh, my gosh. 30%. Wow. Now, I read a, a poll. I don't know who took the poll. Read it on some Internet site that one out of every 25 Americans has, a, has had a near-death experience that they recall. Talk about a kickstart. That gets you on your path in a hurry, gets rid of your desire to make money, to build an empire, to gain power. You know, that puts you on the spiritual path. When you get out there and you say, uh, um, excuse me, but I don't want to go back. This is the nicest thing I have ever encountered. Please don't send me back. And they say, but you have a contract with your children. You need to go back. And you're sitting there saying, bam. <laughs> you know, it, it lets you know there's more to life than what you thought about. I was quite serious last night when I said nothing on this planet, nothing on earth is what it appears to be. Absolutely nothing. If you think you've figured something out, you're in ego. You know, if you think you know why this exists, why this person acts that way, whatever. The only way you could know another person's, what another person needs to take their next, next step is to know 100% of their karma, where they've been for the last 10 million years, what they've been doing, everything they've experienced. You don't know that. You don't know why anybody acts the way they act, why anybody behaves the way they behave, you know? And we were raised in the West, you know, our parents judged our behavior all the time. Our school teachers judged our behavior. The preachers in the church judged our behavior, right? I always go back to the master teachers. Study the master teachers. Any master teacher you want, doesn't matter. Whichever one appeals to you, right? Never heard Babaji or Sai Baba or Jesus or Lao Tzu say anything about any human being's behavior. That's a, that's a tough one for us. It's, we're so inundated with behavior is everything. Behavior is all that's on the six o'clock news. It's all about behavior. Who did what wrong, right? Master teachers don't talk about behavior. They talk about consciousness. They talk about weird stuff like meditation and prayer, silence, inner peace, right? That's where it's all at, okay? So I, I would like to get into some questions, let you guys ask questions. Now, there's two general types of questions. Uh, one are very personal, I'm dealing with this or that. I would kind of like to save those till tomorrow and have questions that everybody can relate to. So on my path, I run into this stumbling block. What, can, what, what should I be thinking about here? or there, because everybody can relate to those kinds of questions, okay? So we have a microphone up here. Now, I'm, I'm well aware that um, I, I read a Gallup poll some years ago. Gallup uh, 
ask a, in a survey, what is your greatest fear? You know, and everybody thought it would be terrorism or disease or disaster. <laughs> the number one thing was public speaking, getting up in front of a group, right? So, so just know that the moment you step up to this microphone, everybody in this room is sending you light, love, surrounding you with peace, confidence, everything that you need. So you may want to ask questions just to get the zap, you know, just to get that <laughs> good, uh, good energy. Okay, so you can speak into that so it uh, gets on the sound system. That'd you be do good. get zapped on the stage when any time you present. It doesn't matter who it is. And I've been up there long enough, you know. <clears throat> First is one minute of history. More years ago than you and I want to remember, you spoke at Pebble Hill Church in Doylestown, Texas. Oh, I remember that. I remember what a great group that was. And I remember saying some really weird things. I, I, I said, there's nothing outside of you but a mirror. And somebody on the back row said, oh, no. I remember that. At the time, it's been a few years, as you know, I was president of the American Society of Dowsers. It took a little while to get you here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. One of the best things I ever heard on one of your many tapes was the one about Hitler. Mm. Okay, I guess that means I have to tell the story of Hitler. <laughs> uh, you know, as I mentioned yesterday, I, I don't um, believe in reincarnation in the traditional sense because we know time is not linear. We know all time is at least simultaneous time, if not all time is no time. Um, so, it, you know, we don't understand reincarnation. All we understand is we are eternal. So we've been here forever and we will be here forever. I mean, not here, but we will be in existence forever. Uh, I was giving a talk one time and, um, and I was saying something like, um, there is no tragedy. Um, everything on earth is the way it should be. It is a school, people are learning, people are experiencing what they need to experience in order to become enlightened, to become that graduate of planet earth that is that light being. You know, I'll never forget when my tour guides showed me the graduates of planet Earth. And looking at that, I just said, you know, you couldn't get me out of this school for anything now. You know, it looks like pain and struggle, but boy, the reward at the end is really, really, really worth it. Well, a woman began to cry when I mentioned that there is no tragedy. And she, um, said, what about Hitler? What about the concentration camps? You know, and our reactive self, our ego self that can't see into karma, reincarnation, the spirit realm, that believes that everything I see is real, reacts and says, that's horrible. You know, we're justified in war in killing the bad guys. That's what we're told. You know, the uh, I, I've read the Ten Commandments a few times, and it doesn't say, thou shalt not kill except in defense of your country. It says, thou shalt not kill. Okay? Now, as I mentioned yesterday, it doesn't really mean that. The original interpretation was, you cannot kill. Don't worry about it. It's not a problem. Okay? You'll be around forever. Nothing can stop your existence. Okay? But our reactive self comes up and says, what could be worse than Stalin, than genocide, than Hitler, than the concentration camps? And so looking for an answer, I simply said to my guides, give me something to say. And they gave me a story about these groups of individuals who had gone to war and killed Next life, victim of a war and killed. Next life, get revenge, go back and get them. They're the ones that killed us. Go to war and kill. 
Next life. Well, you did it to them, now it's your turn. You know. Now you've all been killed, murdered, everything that you can think of hundreds, thousands of times. You don't care. You don't even remember it. It's irrelevant, right? Anybody worried about the last time you were murdered? It doesn't matter, you know. Um, so these, these groups of, this group of millions of individuals <clears throat> were having a discussion on the other side. And they were saying, now the last time we incarnated, those guys massacred us. So what we're going to do this time is go in and massacre them. We're going to get revenge. That's the way the human ego works. Okay? You have ego whether you're in body or out of body. Okay? That's what we're going to do. <clears throat> Some individual said, wait a minute, maybe there's another option. If we'll stop here a moment and look back at our history, we will see that this is a repetitive cycle. We kill them, they kill us. We kill them, they kill us. We kill them, they kill us. So maybe there's another option. So they thought about this. They discussed it for, I don't know, there's no time on the other side. Maybe they discussed it for thousands of years. And then they came up with a plan and they said, we can break this cycle. Okay? Let's go in, let's incarnate into the earth. There's going to be this Hitler guy, and if we play our cards right and practice non-resistance, non-resistance, we're so trained to resist evil. Every authority figure in our life has taught us to resist evil. But if we don't resist evil, if we go in, maybe they'll put us in concentration camps. Maybe they'll gas us and we won't resist, we'll be helpless individuals watching our families die, knowing we're going to die. And if we do that, maybe it will break this cycle of we kill them, they kill us. Hmm. So they thought about it some more and said, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. They came in. They allowed themselves, it was their plan, their contract with the earth, nobody put, there are no victims. Everybody follows their own contract for their life when they incarnate on this planet. They came in, they got gassed. They had a big gathering afterwards, back on the other side. Some being of light, radiant being, came in to the gathering, picked up the microphone, and said, congratulations, this time you made it. Broke the cycle. All human beings see is tragedy. We don't see that tragedy is a repetitive process. As long as ego controls your life, it is a repetitive process. You kill them, they kill you. You kill them, they kill you. Or you abuse them, they abuse you. You abuse them, they abuse you. Or you love them, they love you. You know, whatever. Okay. Our function here as light workers, we're not or merely ego beings here anymore. We passed that point. I'm sorry. You're you're committed. You're going all the way to total enlightenment. You have no choice in that matter. You've passed the point of no return. Which means you have a twofold function. Heal yourself, finish your own karma, pay your own karmic debts, which of course you know don't exist. They're just in your mind. But do that anyway. Do what is yours to do. Follow your bliss through life. And ease the suffering on the planet. You do not ease the suffering on the planet by resisting the suffering. Resisting anything produces more of it. That's cosmic law. 
Anything you resist persists. It will be around for a long time if you resist it. When you see something that needs healing, well, first of all, if you see something that needs fixing, stop and say, I have given control to my ego. Ego fixes. Ego says, we got to do this, we got to do that, we got to fix it. Spirit does not fix anything. Spirit heals everything. The difference between healing and fixing is the difference between heaven and hell. When you try to fix things, you are creating more hell for yourself. When you try to heal things, you are improving life for every being that comes close to your aura. And healing is not hard work. Healing is not a menial task of hard labor or anything like that. Healing is knowing the truth. You will know the truth for everyone who suffers. First of all, their suffering was their choice because they are anxious to graduate from this planet and you would not take their final exams away from them for anything if you could. You see what that final exam is doing for them. You would say, here, let me help you. I can ease your path a little bit. I can remind you of the truth. The truth is there is a source. There is a creator. And that creator is love in spite of what you see on this planet. And if you will yield to that creator's influence, your life will get dramatically better day by day by day. So you are a healer. Your aura, did you ever stop to think that by walking within three feet of somebody, your aura just penetrated their aura and they picked up all the love you have? Unless you were angry when you got close to them. Right? We've got things mixed up. What fixes things? What heals things? What is, what is progress? What is another step on the path? Your presence. Somebody at lunch yesterday came up to me and was talking to me, and I, could, and I don't remember who it was, but um, I could see this aura that was phenomenal. And then, uh, maybe it was last night this happened, and then I saw internal, not really guilt, but disappointment that I can't do more for people. And I could see what happened every time she walked in the presence of somebody she wanted to help. Like a blessing from the angels. You know, your aura. This is not hard work. I see somebody that needs help, I walk up and stand behind them. Don't have to say anything, don't have to let them know I'm there. My aura is filled with inner peace and love, and I will allow that to flow into them. It's hard for us to grasp but that, that that's where the real work is. The real work is the no work of being. Being, being, being. Any other questions? Anybody else want to risk the uh, <laughs> microphone up here? It swells. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that, that's good. Thanks. I'm not exactly sure what you want to say, um, but um, I thought that was an interesting story. But I turned to my friend next to me, who's a dowser, and so I'm not a dowser, and said, "Would you rate that story for its absolute truth on a scale from plus ten to minus ten?" And I'm wondering if the dowsers here want to douse out. The truth of that story. Sure. And where does that matter to you? Well, <laughs> does it? Everybody does it. You might get a thousand different answers. Depends on how you ask the. Depends on how you ask the question. 
was this meaningful story to Read me. Read the absolute truth of that story on a scale from plus 10 to minus 10. Oh, so you're saying there's no such thing as absolute truth? My absolute truth may not be I, I will absolutely say there is no such thing as absolute truth. Absolutely. In, in form. In form. There is absolute truth. That can be stated very simply. I am. That's absolute truth. Every human being is creating every bit of their reality in every moment. No two people have the same reality, therefore there can be no truth that is common to two different people. Nobody, no two people in this room are hearing the same words right now. Right? We are so raised that we have to find the truth and follow the truth. Whose truth? The only truth that matters is the truth that your guidance hands you at the present moment. Now, the story about Hitler was totally made up. I mean, that couldn't have absolute truth. I just made that up, you know. But we're looking for analogies. We're looking for metaphors. We're looking for anything that opens a door in us to believe in something greater than we have been believing in. To believe that something may be helpful. Right? We're not looking for the absolute truth. You can search for eternity for the absolute truth. And if you are searching where are you looking? Outside yourself. There is nothing outside yourself. There's nothing outside yourself. Now in this illusion that we call life on planet Earth, somebody, and there is a, a school board that runs this school, the archangels and all those people, and they set up lessons for us and paths for us, and, lots of things that can be useful and helpful and whatever. If we want to follow them, we're in charge, you know. Your path is your path. And you have been a seeker, which you want to give up. You don't want to be a seeker, you want to be a finder, right? When you seek, you look for answers. You cannot find answers outside of yourself in any book, in any wisdom teaching, any Bible, nothing. Nothing. It's all an inside job. Hard for us to grasp that. It's all an inside job. What story works for you? Don't have to believe it's true or false or anything else. It gave me an insight. That's all you're interested in. The story gave me an insight as to how God might be love. Hi, Captain. I am curious about manifestation. I just have you address that to some extent. I'm finding that when I visualize and come with attention to things these days, things are manifesting very rapidly almost to the point where I pull myself back and say, okay, wait a second, let me uh, take a breather for a second. You know, I, I, I guess I feel like sometimes I'm just manifesting things way too fast, and I'm trying to get, get a handle on, it just seems like things are happening faster for me, and I was hoping you could talk about that a little bit. Do we have a couple of weeks? <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's, there's much said about manifestation. Um, oh. I, I say things lovingly, you know that. I'm, I'm not trying to... Uh, how can I say things nicely? Uh, 
all of the things that I've, the courses that I've looked at, that I've heard about in manifestation, are encouraging us to have control issues. We want to be in control. I know what I need. I need this. I want to manifest this and that and the other. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not work. When does it work? When it is in alignment with your karma. When does it not work? When you have something to learn about it. This is a school, we're learning things here, right? It's not that we came here to manifest great sums of money, houses, cars, relationships. We came here to do our lessons. Now, I can guarantee you that if you allow your spirit guides to do the manifesting for you, it will turn out to be a thousand times better than anything you could have created for yourself. Every time you want to, and, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with, I had this discussion with somebody earlier today too. There are so many parts of the path that are kind of mandatory parts of the path. Learning to be in control, learning to become self-empowered, meaning get what I want, is a part of the path. Now you go, you, you come up to things that you are doing, that you say, you know, I'm not sure this is right, but you know, I just got to do this. Do it. If you're guided to do it, do it. It may not lead you where you want to go, but it will show you an alternative path that will take you where you want to go, okay? So, there are so many, you know, I read The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. I won't tell you how old I am, but I read it like 60 years ago. Um, and what a step up for the average person to believe that they didn't have to be a victim that positive thinking would take them somewhere better than where they were. I mean, a huge step up. What a powerful book that was. But it didn't take me very long to say, I don't want to manifest every little Hershey bar and teaspoon and everything I want in my life. I want to be in the flow. I want the flow to bring me things that are greater than I could have possibly thought of or asked for. You know, when it says, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, the part that got edited out was, if you'll get yourself out of the way. <laughs> it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, and I assure you the kingdom is far greater than anything you could have created for yourself. Now, I have known many people who went on a path of manifesting, and I have encouraged groups to do that, to prove that it works. It works. It does work. If you will do, follow all the rules for manifestation, holding in mind, positive thought, all the stuff that the books tell you that you need to do, it will work. It does work. Will it make you happy? No but it will move you another step up the path. Did you, were you aware? Surely many of you are, are I can see that this answer here is true. Um, many of you have discovered that there is absolutely nothing that is in form. You know, Hershey bars, houses, Mercedes Benz, or whatever, that will make you happy for more than the briefest time on this planet. There's absolutely nothing. New relationship is not going to make you happy. And you don't want to give your relationship the power to make you happy. 
You just gave your power away. If you give somebody else the power to make you happy, you gave them the power to make you unhappy. It's got to be an inside job. What I want is inner peace. Wow, boy, the world will argue with that and say, no, that's not what I want. I want a new car. No, you want inner peace. We are trained not to go for what we want. What we want is to be happy. What we want is inner peace. What we want is joy. Does anybody go for that? No. We go for the house that will make me happy, the person that will make me happy, the car that will make me happy, the job that will make me happy. Go direct for happy. Forget about all the intermediate things, thinking they will make you happy. They will just make you frustrated. The house comes with payments. The car comes with insurance. Can you imagine being so insecure about your path that you buy insurance to cover your mistakes? <laughs> Awakened people do not buy insurance. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did that help at all? <laughs> Thanks. Good afternoon. Uh, I have a question about Malin Lopez. It's hard to put in numbers, as a lot of things are. I, uh, I think about the, that I am personally responsible for every last little bit of my reality. And that gives me a lot of puzzlement, but it gives me a lot of comfort, too. And I see that, in a way, I'm able to move into this reality and uh, sense that uh, I'm not a victim of someone else, for instance. And yet, here's this other, I hear a lot of people talking about, about other people that are sharing the same reality, clusters of people, both in physical and out of physical. And uh, people talk about the soul clusters, and these other souls also have this ability to be responsible <coughs> for every last little job and tittle of their reality. And uh, I see a minimal conflict there. So am I sharing this? Am I sharing my personal responsibility with all these other people that have exactly the same potential? Like the group of souls that decided to, in your metaphorical story, uh, get immersed in a concentration camp. Uh, they obviously acted together in that sense, yet each one of them were responsible for their own reality. I like the idea of many souls having that opportunity to be uh, responsible for their own reality. But I'm just not too sure where to carry that idea. Does that in any way, shape, or form sound like a question? Or <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. A comment? Before you leave, yes. uh, I don't know how many of you see auras, but look at her aura. Um, she is so close to the end of the journey. So close to the end of the journey which you can see in her aura, rather amazing, rather amazing. So if we're not intruding by looking at your aura, <laughs> thank you. No, that's <laughs> Thank you. Um, gosh, you know, there's so many paradoxes. And to me, we just have to use the paradoxes. If we look for which is true and which is false, we're kind of at a dead end. Uh, the paradoxes. Am I the creator of everything I see? Does that not impinge on other people's right to create? We, we just have trouble grasping 10th dimensional reality concepts from third dimensional time space. We see ourselves as separate. It's absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. You and I are one. Now, I don't think there's anybody in here who can comprehend that yet. 
but we are absolutely one. So if I create my reality, you have created your reality. We created reality, but there's no we because there aren't two of us. There's just the one of us. Ah, what I would say um, is relax. When it's time to figure out stuff that can't be figured out, turn it over to spirit. Turn it over to spirit. Ask spirit. Spirit, can you give me insight that will make this clear to me? It's always going to be a yes. There are no no's to that, answer, that question. Can you give me insight that will clarify this for me? Then relax and let it happen. Time is a teaching tool on earth. And time, you've noticed this, everything you want takes time to arrive. Whatever it is that you were after took time to arrive. Okay? That's part of our lesson plan down here. So it's hard to bypass that. That's why every master teacher has talked about have faith, trust, you know, believe that we can do it even though you don't think you can do it. They're happy to do absolutely everything for us. Okay. So, who creates what? My best answer to that is, for me, it doesn't matter. We're in, we want to be control freaks. What am I manifesting? What are you manifesting? What is God manifesting? I want to know the answers, you know. There's a lovely line in A Course in Miracles that says, give up the insane desire to control reality. Give up the insane desire to control reality. You wouldn't have a clue how to control it if you were given absolute power. Anybody see the movie Bruce Almighty? What do you do with the power if you had it? I don't know. I don't know what other people need. I don't know what I need. I don't know what the planet needs. I don't know anything. Huh. Maybe I'll relax and let the universe take care of everything. Hmm. Hi, I'm from Texas, and I feel that as being on the spiritual path, that I don't ever get a break. I'm always working. And sometimes I'm just really challenged with it. Even when I go on vacation, I see people that need help. I'm praying. It's like an ongoing thing. And sometimes I get mad because people are always calling me. You help me with this, you help me with that. And I'm like, help yourself. And I, don't, I just, maybe you can shed some light on that. That's a really excellent question because it applies to more areas of our life than that. It applies to everything giving our power away, you know, uh, believing that we could be victimized when we can't be victimized. If it appears in any way, shape, or form, you know, relatives or a work situation or governments or anything is victimizing us, then obviously we just discovered one of our lessons. Go back and look at your contract for this life, what you came in to learn, and there it is, number 17A was victimization, right? Okay, so how do I, how do I handle that? Suggestions? Let go. Let go. Go back to stop. Go. Go, go inside. You betcha. I <laughs> said, thank you. I think we're all pretty good at that, aren't we? Is there an answer for me here? Yes. Is there an easy solution? Yes. Do I have to work hard at this? No. 
You know, if, you, if you'll ask questions for two or three or four hours without nonstop, you'll find the right answer. Okay? If we are a victim, then recognize where you are. That's a good place to start. Oh, I've given my power away to people to control me, to victimize me. Ah, Spirit, do you have an answer for that? Yeah, I believe you do. Is there anything Spirit can't solve? I don't think so. Okay. So we start now, now Raymond's talking tonight. Raymond's going to say, and keep your mental shelf. Raymond's going to fill it up. Okay. <laughs> But Raymond has great success with establishing intent. And listen to him when he says, I don't make it hard. I don't make anything hard. I establish my intent and I let go. He'll say that 10 times tonight. Okay. You have an intent to become free. That starts you on the path to freedom. Okay. Otherwise, you're looking for control answers. How can I be in control of these people that are bothering me? Hmm. Yeah. Does that help? Sort of. Want to expand on the question? Sometimes I just don't want Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Everybody in here identifies with that. Yeah. Okay. Now, why would she find herself feeling like other people expect her to help and she doesn't want to help? That sounds very karmic to me. That sounds like how we lived 18 lives ago, right, where we were in control of people. We were making other people do our bidding. And now it's payback time. Other people can't make us do their bidding, but they can make us think we're supposed to do their bidding. Okay, so it's time to release that. Okay. All struggles have some source back in the karmic world. Can you go find your karma? I don't know. People spend their whole life doing past life regressions. Do they get the answer? No. The answer is in the present moment. All your karma is inside you in your present moment. Love in the present moment, non-resistance in the present moment, heals all your karma. You don't need to know about karma or past lives or anything. Do what the master teachers said to do. I don't remember any of them saying, get past life regressions. Right? I just said, love, be at peace, be kind to people. Right? Can you say no and be kind at the same time? That's a scary one for many, many, many people. For me to say no to you means you're not going to like me anymore, you're going to judge me, you're going to do this and do that and do the other. It's very scary for many people. It takes practice, you know. So you come up, you practice, you say some way, you know, I really understand that you have some needs here right now. I'm just not in a position at the moment to help you. I'm sorry about that. If they have such a need to control you that they stop being your friend, then you are very pleased that they are no longer your friend. Because they weren't a friend, they were a controller. Okay? It's scary, it's not easy. You know, it it's, takes practice like everything else. If you t- 
totally gave it all away. You know how, like they say in Hollywood, have your people call my people? Just say, if, you know, I can't right now, but I will have my guides get your guides and they will heal you. They will work on you. And just let it go because you know it will happen. Would that work? Absolutely. First of all, anything you believe that will work, will work. Okay? Now we have all these three dimension time space limitations. I got to be in their presence. I got to do this. I got to do this. Intent is all that matters. Have the intent to heal everybody you meet, and that will happen. I was told very emphatically that every prayer I send out is answered. The only question is when. It will be received, it will be answered but you cannot violate another person's free will. You cannot heal another person against their will. I remember what my grandmother taught me by her life, by her example. She needed her illnesses very much. When she would be sick, the grandchildren were all assigned to go over and spend the night with her to help her, to stay with her, to be company for her. So she was predictably sick three days a week. I asked about Jesus' healing. I said, well, you know, healing against the free will doesn't work, but Jesus healed everybody. And I was told approximately 55% of the healings Jesus attempted worked. In, in the Bible, it occasionally says, when somebody asks for a healing, Jesus would say, do you believe I can do this? And if they said yes, it was done, it was over, it was complete. No process to go through. If they said, well, I'm not, have a nice life, catch you next time around. Okay? Many of you have done many, many healings, and some just don't work because you're not in charge of the other person's need for illness. Gets you attention, gets you lots of things. Look, I turned your wisdom last night. My name is Fred. I like hearing what you've had to say, your wisdom you shared yesterday and today. And the question I have is I recently had some insight from my guidance and about the um, earth and the illusion of separateness we have here. I was given two words that were very important, and that's experience and perspective. And through experience here on earth, um, we gain perspective that we wouldn't have otherwise with the illusion of separateness and it gives us uh, it makes us um, gives us more dimension to who we are and um, and helps and it takes it from being plain two dimensional to being three dimensional and and more uh, more of an experience I guess uh, that you bring it back with you when you get to the I mean to your eternal self. And I just wonder if you can expand on that a little bit. Hmm. Doesn't anybody have an easy question? <laughs> <clears throat> what life on earth is all about is experience and perception. Expanding your perception till you see only source, only God, only the creator, only the angelic, only the whatever your terms are that you like for those words, okay? Keep expanding your perception. Keep allowing things that don't serve you, beliefs that don't serve you to fall away, and beliefs that do serve you and humanity to take their place. This is not, you know, an instantaneous trip. You've been working on this path for what, what do people call us? Old souls, right? Now, being an old soul simply means you're a very slow learner. <laughs> a 
But what I would say here is, again, when you hear great words of wisdom like experience and perception, bring them in, resonate with them, let them go. Drop them. You know, what we do as spiritual students is take a step up the ladder, fall in love with the step, and want to stay there forever. Every teaching you've ever had before served you well. Now let it go. Let's take another step. The next teaching will be much more magnificent. And it will blow you away, and you'll want to fall in love with it, and you'll want to stay on that step. And, oh, this is where it's at. I found the answer. Great. All right. We'll check back with you another million years and see if you're ready to take another step. Okay? More steps, more steps, more steps, more steps. So, I don't think there's a more concise way to say what life on earth is all about than to say experience and perception. And do we want to stay in this life on earth forever? I think I'd rather be out walking on water. You know, let's take it a little further. You have all power for all things because all reality is in your mind. And if you have a limitation in your mind, that limitation rules you. It's not something imposed on you, it's something you just hold in your mind. Let it go. Let it go. Have fun. Enjoy life. There's a great guru over in India named Mare Baba. One of my favorites. All he says to people is, you guys know Mir Baba? Be happy. There was a song, some songwriter went over and saw him and wrote that song. Be happy, don't worry. You know, be happy. Be happy. I've heard you talking about being happy and being in the flow, both of which are things I certainly aspire to. I also have been blessed with a vision and a passion of work for my life. And sometimes I don't know how to hold those two things at the same time, to be pursuing the passion with everything that I am and also to be in the flow, to just let it go. Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss. No better path exists than to follow your bliss. What's your passion? Do it. Now, why is it your passion? Because you're good at it. You brought in everything with you that will allow you to excel in this path, in this whatever you are doing. And in that excelling will also be your lessons. So the lessons will come up and say, you know, this feels like too much work. Is there a way to do my passion without it being so much work? The answer will always be yes. You don't even need the pendulum. The answer is always yes. <laughs> okay? Every passion, every bliss, every joy, every person you ever ran into that you fell in love with, as you know full well, came with lessons. Right? So our passion, our bliss, and what we need to learn are intricately tied together. So your intent, as Raymond would say, is to follow your bliss in ease, in peace, in joy. Establish your intent. Let the universe know that that's your intent. Say it out loud. Say it in your head. And slowly, step by step, your life will change in that direction. Does that help? Yes, yeah, good. Do need to follow your bliss. You, you chose your bliss before you came in. You chose your passion, what you love to do. Right? Now you might be saying, this isn't spiritual. I have a lawyer friend. 
I mean, just, I say lawyer friends, some people say, oh, you know. <laughs> who's on the spiritual path and is fully aware that metaphysical students in the world have not got a clue about business or law or getting along in this world. And he says, I can get them through it, okay? They don't know what they're doing when it comes to anything practical, but I can get them through it. That's a great mission. I love having him in my life. <laughs> you know, I got no clue how to do this or that or the other in a practical sense. I'm, I'm one of the least practical people you know, but I got friends. <laughs> yeah. Okay, how are we doing on time? Okay. Okay, well, the answers are simple. If they feel complex, you're in ego. If you're trying to say, well, it's a no-win situation. Yeah, I want to do that, but I can't because of this. Whoa, that's an easy one for your guides to handle. You know, they handle millions of those every day. No-win situations are their specialty. That's why they're guides. Yeah. Hmm. Keep it simple. Watch for agendas, hidden agendas. Watch for control issues. Let go of all that. Trust that the universe is on your side. I often say, if the universe is on your side, you do not have a problem. If the universe is not on your side, you do not have a chance. <laughs> so why not relax? Okay, the universe is on your side. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Ah. Mm. Everybody take a deep breath and feel that ah. Now I see so many auras that if you will just be unaware that you have them, walk up to anybody in need when you leave this room, you will have eased their path simply by blending your aura with theirs. We're all one. We're all the same. Hmm. Wow, it is so good to sit up here. <laughs> Energy beaming up is just fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. Thank you.